over 12 million people crammed into just 837 square miles, Tokyo is the world's most populous city. Nestled inside a nondescript office building among the chaos is Tecmo's Team Ninja, creators of some of the world's most technologically advanced video games, and Ninja Gaiden Sigma. Industry icon Tomonobu Itagaki has taken Team Ninja from a small operation to one of the most respected developers in the industry in the span of a decade. And with Sigma, he's decided to pass the directorial torch on to his young protege, Yosuke Hayashi. What follows is a week-long excursion through the Tokyo underground to uncover the mystery behind Team Ninja and its new luminary, Hayashi-san. It's the first night of shooting, and Tecmo takes us to one of its favorite haunts, a rock and roll bar called Heaven. As the team enjoys the night out, Hayashi-san prefers to stay low-key. On the complete other end of the spectrum is the president of Tecmo America, the enigmatic Satoshi Kanimatsu. If Itagaki is the heart of Team Ninja, Kanimatsu-san is undoubtedly its soul, and he quickly grabs a guitar and begins firing off some riffs. Eventually, the rest of the team follow suit for a full-on Tecmo Jam session. When the fretboards cool off, we get a chance to talk to Kanimatsu-san about his hot new director, Hayashi-san. Up until now, the Ninja Gaiden series and Team Ninja has been led by Itagaki. But it's very important to show our consumers and audience that there's a new generation behind the entire series and that it's not just Itagaki that we have within our company that is the talent and creative force behind putting out entertaining titles. When we interviewed him, we noticed that there was something different about him. He may look timid and shy, but deep down inside, there's something that was different about him. Most importantly, his passion and his creativeness and everything that he puts into a product. He's also very intelligent and has a lot of good ideas that he puts on the table. Hayashi has been at Tecmo for seven years, and compared to some of the other employees that came in at the same time, he has risen through the ranks quite quickly. As the night comes to a close and the team looks for the next spot, Hayashi-san goes his own way. the next day, and Hayashi-san is making his way to work. Unlike many top-line developers in America, you won't find him driving a $100,000 car to work. He takes the train. After almost two hours in transit and a stop at one of Japan's famous vending machines, he finally arrives at the Team Ninja office. This is our chance to sit down and talk to pivotal members of the team. Assistant director Andy Szymanski is one of a few Americans to work at a Japanese developer. I had always wanted to work in development, and uh, in the first Ninja Gaiden, uh, when that was, uh, when we were working on that, uh, I was asked by Team Ninja to come in, kind of as a temporary loan, so to speak, to uh, write the English script and, and do everything for that game. And then after that, I had kind of made my place there, and they said, you know, why don't you come in and, and work on development uh, side full time? So. There's definitely no bias in terms of nationality. There's nothing like, you're an American, therefore, you know, we're not going to promote you or anything like that. Um, however, and this is not just in game development, this is in any field or in any industry, um, a Japanese company as an organization is very different from a, a, an American company or a European company. So it's less about um, you know, overcoming the barrier of nationality as it is learning about the culture, learning about the corporate culture, learning about the work ethic, um, and especially as an American we tend to be pretty opinionated and we tend to be pretty um, strong in our views about uh, you know things like um, work versus free time and things like that. But for the most part I have to conform to the Japanese organization and once I've done that and once I've earned the trust of all these guys, then they accept me just like they would anybody else. So it's certainly not a, a ethnicity or a nationality issue. 
you know, I have to earn my place. Um, even more so in the U.S., I think that the Japanese are very um, strict about making sure that you have earned the right to be in a, a particular position. When you're on the outside, I mean, I guess when you're, when you're a, a, a gamer who reads uh, magazines, looks at websites and things like that, you see the interviews, you see the screenshots, you see kind of the surface and stuff that, that is coming out of the team, but uh, you don't get a lot of chance to actually go in and, and, and see the inner workings. And it, it, is kind of a, it is kind of a shock when you go in there and you realize how much work is literally required on every aspect in order to get something done. Hidegaki-san is, he is our, our leader, he is, you know, kind of the, the force and inspiration that drives the team. And so, um, working with him is, uh, it's very inspiring, it's very um, uplifting. Um, you know, there are difficulties, obviously. Um, Hayasan is, you know, this being his first major uh, project as director and also being, uh, you know, relatively young. Um, he and I are about the same age, so um, it, I think it's more of a cooperative process with him. Um, he's very authoritative and very uh, definitive when he needs to be. Um, when a decision needs to be made, he will come out and say, you know, do this and, and don't talk back. But um, I think that uh, because the Ninja Gaiden Sigma team is composed of a lot of uh, guys who have, you know, are you know, in their fourth, fifth, sixth years and have, you know, have a couple of projects under their belt. Um, th there's a lot of, of energy there. There's a lot of cooperative, uh, cooperative spirit there. Um, and uh, Hayasan is kind of, kind of a little bit down to earth in that, in that way. You can kind of approach him and give him your ideas and you may get turned down, but uh, uh, there's definitely a lot of feedback there. Females have recently entered the workforce in mass in Japan, and the progressive Team Ninja already has a number of them on staff, not the least of which is environmental artist Atsuko Akiyama. It hasn't really been difficult at all in that my superiors really look at the work I do and judge me based on that work rather than anything else. Since in Japan now more women are entering the workplace and more of them are being involved in game development as well, I'm really enjoying what I do. Women and children play games as well, and especially in Japan now with the population getting older, we have elderly people also getting involved in games, so I think it's going to be important to have females on the teams to supply that perspective. I like to see how far I can really push the boundaries with creating beautiful backgrounds to get them close or even surpass the real thing. Also, I like to take on more responsibilities as my time with the company increases and work more deeply on the project. Team Ninja's games are a mix of Japanese tradition and bleeding edge technology. A trip to Tokyo Dajingu, or the Love Shrine, with lead environmental artist Hideki Nimi is the embodiment of this ideal. The shrine is intended for the people of Japan to go and pray for a mate or receive a blessing before asking for their significant other's hand in marriage. Entrance to the shrine must first cleanse their hands at the fountain before moving forward. Since our game features a lot of Japanese elements, it's important to get those themes correct and authentic because if what we do doesn't match the real thing, then it's gonna bring you out of the experience. So that is important in establishing the overall game world itself, but also to provide a compelling place within the game for the player to interact with. For us, we see Japanese architecture on a daily basis, but a player overseas might not be as familiar with it. So I'd like to think that by incorporating traditional elements and being authentic when creating these environments, that it'll kind of help to bring that culture and architecture to foreign audiences, and maybe give them a better understanding of it. 